Are you looking to buy or sell real estate? You've got questions, we've got answers. Welcome to the show, it's going to be great. Featuring Matt and Jen from Home Team for You. And now, without further ado, it's Matt and Jen. Thanks, Jacob. I'm Matt. Yeah, hi, Matt. How are you? Yeah, I'm Jen. All right, today we have a great show. We are going to be talking all about energy and energy things. So before we get into that, I'd like to introduce Brendan Grabowski, who is back in studio with us. Hello, everyone. Hey, how's Happy it going? Happy to be back. Uh, things are going great, you know, finally getting out there and I'm a real person, real agent <laughs> now, real so just happy to be back. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Happy to have you back. And our uh, out of studio guest today is Steve Pipson with Outreach. And, he's the Outreach and Technical Advisor for Focus on Energy. Hey, Steve. Afternoon. How are you guys doing today? Good. Doing great. Excellent. Doing great. Hopefully keeping cool. It's uh, a little yeah. warm out there. <laughs> we are keeping cool. Yesterday, our company decided to replace the AC units on our roof. So we thought, no problem, we're tough. But It's not that tough. Several of us were in the basement. <laughs> 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 so our podcast studio became uh, where we were all just working. <laughs> right. Keeping uh, Using the cool of the basement to, yeah. to stay cool. Yeah, it's certainly hot out there. So tell us about yourself and uh, Focus on Energy. Well, myself, uh, I've been in uh, residential construction and uh, made my way into energy efficiency, um, working at Focus on Energy. So uh, my main role at Focus on Energy is uh, outreach to uh, real estate agents like yourself. Uh, um, and uh, basically to bring you in to focus on energy as ambassadors. And uh, that's one of the great things uh, I can say if uh, Home Team for You has brought in, uh, I think, just about all of your agents at this point, and you're all now ambassadors, which is awesome. Um, for anyone listening out there, if you don't realize what an ambassador can do for you, uh, besides selling you their uh, home, because obviously they're a real estate agent, um, they will also get you a free welcome kit from Focus on Energy with a, uh, a nice HVAC tune-up voucher included in that welcome kit. So what's in the uh, kit? So, so the welcome kit, uh, it, it's, it's pretty simple. I, I think it sounds bigger than it really is, but it's, uh, it's a nice little uh, sort of introduction to Focus on Energy. So um, inside of the welcome kit is beside the uh, $125 voucher uh, for that HVAC tune-up um, is also a, a – a booklet in there of tips and tricks on how to make your home more efficient, and then a whole bunch of information about the Focus on Energy uh, offerings that we have available to to all utility customers across Wisconsin. So oh. it's, uh, it's awesome. And, and maybe I should step back just to sort of uh, introduce Focus on Energy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We are Focus on Energy is a statewide energy efficiency program, and we work with utility companies across Wisconsin uh, to uh, help um, utility customers make their buildings more efficient. So basically, we're put in place to help move an energy efficiency project forward, either through giving out an incentive or uh, just some education or information to help that project move forward. Interesting. So where should we kind of start um, when it comes to energy? Because I know there's so many different facets. You can kind of have heating and cooling. You can have the light bulbs. You can have the insulation. Right. What should we dive into? Well, you know, usually for me, I always like to have folks start at the simple things, right? What we call the low-hanging fruit. So take care of the light bulbs first. You just brought that up. And that's that's a really easy one to take care of. Uh, get all those incandescent light bulbs out. Um, if you're taking out any of those flu old fluorescent bulbs, those curly ones, then they need to be disposed of. So make sure that they're disposed of correctly. But then getting the LED lights in there is uh, the best way to go. Uh, they save a lot of energy. They're on a day like today, you could actually have the bulb running, and you're not getting heat coming off that light bulb, right? So that means it's helping cutting down the cooling costs. So simple things like that. Next step um, would be, and actually I should step step back there again and say, you know, if you want, you can go to Focus on Energy and get one of these nifty little boxes sent out to you um, with light bulbs in it for free. That's so cool. uh, this one here came uh, oh, packed free. full of uh, six LED light bulbs and um, some uh, pipe wrap insulation as well. So you can get that pipe wrap insulation around some of the pipes uh, near your water heater. And then a little card to test the water heater temperature so it's not too uh, too hot. Um, 
after the light bulbs, and I would uh, want to probably head people in the direction of maybe looking at appliances. Those are usually easier things to tackle, and um, things like plug strips, advanced plug strips around, uh, like your television. Those advanced plug strips can help uh, cut down what we call phantom energy use, which is uh, energy being used when your uh, electronics is just sitting there in standby mode, waiting for you to click the button on the remote. Uh, so you can you can get those like actually if you're interested in those you can get them at um, any of the local um, stores that do electronics or even even visit uh, Focus and Energy's uh, marketplace. Uh, we have them available there as well. So um, and uh, the appliances obviously going to an Energy Star appliance would make a lot of sense. I, I know with uh, refrigerators and freezers, if uh, you're replacing uh, a refrigerator that's like over. 10 years old, that's a non-Energy Star model. If you replaced it today, you would probably see a payback, and this can vary a little bit, uh, four to five years. So of just like paying back the cost of the new refrigerator, uh, just because every, just with your energy savings. You so. mentioned the uh, Focus on Energy website um, and Marketplace. Mm-hmm. How do they get there? Like if I wanted to go and see what a Focus on Energy Marketplace looked like, how do I find that? All right. So Focus on Energy... Um, uh, is focusonenergy.com. That's our main web pay, uh, website. Um, to get to the marketplace, I'd have to look at my card here, and I don't know if that's actually on here. So uh, the marketplace, if you go to the res- residential um, page, on, uh, so we have our – when you get to the main uh, website, it's divided up into business or residential. You go to the residential page and then look for the marketplace it'll be right along the top banner then it has all the um led light bulbs and all the energy efficient yep so so at the marketplace you can actually purchase them um with that box that i was just telling you about that's actually a free uh, free box full of uh, items sent to your home so you just go online sign up and I'll send that out to you. Uh, the marketplace is where you actually be purchasing something, but you'll get an instant discount from Focus on Energy for purchasing any of the items there. Um, I actually, I just saw a great deal come out uh, a couple of days ago. If anyone's got a um, kitchen and they got all those recess light fixtures and they want to replace those recess light bulbs, you can get 10 light bulbs, um, some pipe wrap insulation, and there's one out of the thing. It's eluding me right now on what it is in the in the deal, uh, but it's I know it's seventy two dollars worth of items worth, and you can get it for fifteen bucks. Oh, wow! So so great deal. So and that's that that so that price is brought down by focus on energy. That's like an incentive, basically. It's a built in incentive right there. So what else um, besides heating and cooling? I'm sorry, go ahead. What else besides heating and cooling uh, does focus energy work towards? So uh, on the heating and cooling side, we have incentives. If you're replacing a furnace, boiler, um, something like that, uh, you can actually uh, get an incentive from us uh, for that replacement. Uh, Just so everyone knows, 95% AFUE is the baseline for any new uh, equipment that will get an incentive from Focus on Energy. Um, We have a great... uh, um, incentive right now for uh, heat pumps. I don't know if you guys are aware of what a heat pump is, but uh, a heat pump is like a. <laughs> I can see Jen's eyes sort of rolling the back there. It's like, nope, <laughs> not, heat pumps not, not registering with me. Um, a heat pump is like an air conditioning unit, uh, and it's a uh, it's but it's souped up. It's like it can it can operate like if you can imagine like the fans going one direction for cooling, it can actually turn and go the other direction for heating. So uh, a heat pump can provide heating and cooling. Mm -hmm. Um, The great thing about heat pumps is they don't actually uh, create energy. Oh, sorry. They don't create heat or cooling. They're actually just transferring energy from one place to another. So they take heat from inside of the house and move it outside on a day like today. In the winter, it can actually take heat from outside and move it inside. And yes, believe it or not, there's heat outside in winter. Um, and um, I know there's a, a fantastic uh, um, video on this old house. If you look up that this old house and heat pumps, they got a fantastic video that really breaks down how a heat pump works, and they're awesome. Uh, big technology that's coming into the marketplace right now, and we're promoting it. There's actually a – if you're replacing an AC unit right now, we have a $1,000 incentive to put a heat pump in place. Wow. So what is that's, included in installing a heat pump? I guess I don't, I'm not very familiar with it either. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What does it take to? Yeah. What? To put how it do you in? install a heat pump in an existing house? 
so a heat pump would be sitting outside just like where your air conditioning unit sits outside. So it's that's the heat pump is that outdoor unit. All right. So um, and what's now I I believe most uh, HVAC guy uh, um, contractors would refer to as the uh, condensing unit, right? right. The outdoor yep. unit. Um, that's where the heat pump will go. Um, and there may have to be some slight changes. I'm not 100% sure on this to the line sets. That's those copper pipes that go inside. They've got a little bit of insulation around them. Um, but it can, and like I said, the, that uh, heat pump, like, you know, remember, it was only like, what, a month ago we had that cold spell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, it was, and everyone was turning their furnaces back on. You could actually use a heat pump successfully and very cheaply to heat the home during that time. So um, really awesome and uh, can shave off a little bit of your costs around, um, you know, in, on the shoulder seasons. Mm. So, so pretty cool. Uh, beyond the uh, heating and cooling, um, if you're wanting to make your own home more efficient, uh, the, you can add insulation and uh, air seal um, and get an incentive from Focus on Energy as well. Can I ask you a quick question? Absolutely. Does the heat pump replace the need for AC or do they work together? replaces wow okay wow. and the furnace so assuming- the ac unit gets it's it's carted away and that heat pump gets put in its place so it's providing heating and cooling and it works just as effectively as a normal ac unit oh even even more effectively they're they're even more efficient wow so that's why so they're promoting them big time now is uh because they're way more efficient plus they can you can also get a little bit of heating out of them too so then the next question would be does it replace your furnace Eventually, we may see that happening. Yeah. Wow. I don't think so right now. That they the technology for heat pumps has come a long way. They now have what they uh, consider cold climate heat pumps. Yeah. Up until, um, oh, I think it was about like about ten years ago, those heat pumps were limited to the southern part of the country. They did very very well down in the in the warm climate um, or the moderate climates, but not not, not up in the cold areas. But uh, I know Canada is moving like forward very quickly with the heat pump technology. So um, so if they can do it up there, we can certainly do it here. So <laughs> so I apologize for making this a heat pump question, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine because it's a new technology yeah. out there. You know what? There's there's even uh, before you get your question in there. There's even um, heat pumps that are being uh, put into uh, electric. Um, water heaters. Oh, wow. so it's called a hybrid water heater. So you can have an electric water heater with a heat pump on it, duct it to the outside, get all that fantastic heat from outside today, and dump it into your water. So the next question is obviously, is the heat pump? How does it compare in price to the AC units? I I can't say that I know offhand what the pricing difference is, but I know that they will be a little bit more expensive. Um, they do have some more bells and whistles in them, so you know. Obviously, if you're paying for bells and whistles, you're going to be paying a little extra. Jacob's Googling um, it right now. <laughs> hopefully, that, that $1,000 incentive we have will help offset that cost. Right, right. I'm sorry I missed that. <laughs> yeah, Jacob's look, Googling a uh, heat pump cost right now. I can see it in his oh, eyes. I'm working on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, on the phone, and you guys are out in Sound Prairie. I know there's an HVAC contractor yeah, out there. Carter? Right on the highway. I, yeah. I've seen them before. Yeah, right. <laughs> it says uh, average cost. Let me get my face up on the screen. I can't do too. Where am I? <laughs> Trying to do too many things at once. Average cost, according to Google, is three thousand eight hundred seventy-five to ten thousand dollars. So at the low end, it's probably pretty. I mean, if you have a thousand dollar rebate, yeah, it's, about it's pretty same. comparable mm-hmm. to just an AC unit. Mm-hmm. Yep, they're bringing. They're trying. That's what that thousand dollars is there for: is to yep. try and get that, get those projects to move forward. You know, so that's that's the concept of focus on energy. We're trying to get those introduced into the market to the point where the market's so saturated that then it just becomes the norm, right? Like the 95% efficient furnaces are now. Uh, you know, I think uh, focus on energy was very successful at promoting the 90% efficient furnaces. Right. And then everyone was getting, then we found <laughs> that uh, focus on energy was turning 20 years old, and so were those furnaces. Right. And they were getting replaced, so we had to lift the bar and go, okay, now it's 95%. <laughs> so, You mentioned air sealing. Talk about that a little bit. Air sealing is um, when you look around the home for the, the, the gaps and cracks around the home and you seal them up nice and tight. All right, because you got warm air, I, and we mostly look at. I mean, obviously, on a day like today, there's some discomfort, but mostly we're looking at at the heating time of uh, our season. 
or our season of heating where we, you know, that's the in the cold is what we're concerned about where we're creating the interior which we call the condition space we're creating heat and then that heat is just leaking out through the house we want to slow that let heat loss down um, and there's two ways that heat can get out it can either move through the materials as just heat alone or warm air can then find where those gaps and cracks are so we actually have a process called an energy assessment um, some people might know it as an energy audit uh, where someone comes, a consultant comes in with a blow door and they test the home for leakiness. So yeah, then they can actually our... like say quantifiably, yeah. your home is X leaky and here's where I found all the leaks. Yeah. So we did that on our, uh, Hill. yeah, we had a house, the last, not the house we have now, but the one before as part of when they built it, they did the, uh, the vacuum test, I call it, or the blower yeah, test. Yeah, we were like, yep. what are they doing? Yeah. But then they got they, there was some kind of a gold plaque or something we got in our yeah, uh, yeah we were on our, oh, our okay. um, electrical box because yeah, that was probably like 1998 yeah yeah, yeah. that's your gold <laughs> plaque yeah <laughs> yeah but it, it gave the rating that the was star a, rating that was a that was a f uh, focus on an energy new home and uh, it was tested as part of the the uh, process and actually that that goes even further back you actually have a consultant involved in that new home who are looking who's looking at the plans and confirming that that home is going to be built in a manner that will be um you know save energy right and then they'll come out and do an inspection at a point uh, just after the insulation uh, just before insulation is installed to look for any issues that may be hidden once that insulation goes in place and then they come back finally to test to make sure that that house actually um, hit the air leakage rate that they were expecting it to um, and that will then confirm for the builder like you did great uh, you did all right sort of a thing so um, if it met a certain status then you would have got that little certificate yeah. that was Pop, a, pop right on the, uh, the like panel a, right down like a there. Star rating or something. And, yeah. yeah, we did done good. <laughs> yep, yep. So we have a uh, that was uh, probably back when you had your home built. Then it was um, uh, the um, Energy Star program. Yes, uh, they shifted away from that, and it's now uh, just a focus on energy new home certification. Um, they will actually give an incentive. So they give the incentive on that program directly to the. Builder, builder of the yep. home, and not to the actual occupant, yep. and that's to change to help the building uh, builders change their building practices to create more efficient homes. Uh, they'll actually give an incentive all the way up to what we consider a zero energy home, which is a home that uses no energy in a calendar year. So that's solar, basically, so, and off the grid. Yep. Well, not quite off the grid. Um, you'll still need to be connected because, like on a day like today, yeah. you'll probably actually be consuming. Or right. uh, more than you'd be creating um, with the AC sort of cranking. Um, winter, you'll probably consume more than you'll actually be, um, you know, creating. But then there's going to be some times when you can create more energy than you're consuming. So. so if I went and built a house now, I could have you guys come and do the, the blower <laughs> test and the whole. Um, Absolutely. Nice. Yep. Are there builders in the area that pretty much do that um, as a given? They just have that as part of their program? Absolutely, yes. There are some, um, you can uh, research them. Uh, there's a list on our website. Um, I know, uh, without, you know, playing favorites, I know right. one that's uh, probably well known around the area, which is Viridian. Viridian yep. uh, they, I, all of their homes are tested oh. and certified. So, um, you know, uh, uh, O'Brien Homes. Tim O'Brien. Yep, Tim O'Brien Homes. They're, uh, they're all tested as well. And in fact, I think, Tim O'Brien is, if I recollect, um, did a um, um, subdivision over in, in the Milwaukee yes. area. That's the uh, zero, uh, the the zero energy yep. subdivision. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat. Uh, you can see, like if you go to their website, you can actually see the solar panels on the roofs. Yeah. That's, that's pretty that's crazy. That's awesome. Right? So, um, and, and that's, I think that was a zero energy ready, I think it was called. Yeah. Uh, so some of them may not have had the panels on them, but they were they're wired yep. ready to go. So basically, it was just like a plug and play sort of a thing. It's kind of neat though. They did the whole neighborhood is the zero. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Steve, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta talk to Tim O'Brien because I just decided I'm gonna build with them. <laughs> and like, I was all interested about these heat pumps because they're giving me an AC unit, and I'm gonna be like, hey, Tim O'Brien, what's up? Where's my heat pump at? <laughs> Where's the heat pump? Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, if it's all being put in new, you might actually be at a point where you could actually not be paying that much more. 
the he's gonna get the ten thousand dollar version. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm getting the gold plated <laughs> titanium one with the Pokemon Charizard card built into it. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> I want to see photos of that when it's done. Uh, it's gonna be great. It'll be thanks, Steve. There'll just be a little plaque <laughs> yeah. there. So here's a tip with the heat pumps that they've discovered in uh, Canada because uh, obviously it's a bit of a cold place up there at times. Um, that if you put the heat pump on the south face. It is better because it is picking up some of the actual natural heating from the sun in the mm. winter, and that helps its efficiency. I'm surprised you didn't and do solar can, panels. And in, your in house. Canada, actually, they're putting some of them in the garages hmm. to even make them even more efficient. So. Right. Interesting. Oh, then you're re reusing the heat of the garage to. Not so much reusing the heat; you're just protecting it from those like really harsh Hard elements. elements yeah. I, you know. Canada's like right next up from Canada's the Arctic, so you know <laughs> it gets cold. It's a little cold. <laughs> a little bit warmer than Wisconsin. Just a little. I really wanted to do uh, solar panels on my roof, but it was thirty grand, and I was like, I need that thirty grand for more, <laughs> more space <laughs> for your screen and porch. <laughs> yes, my sunroom. Oh yeah, your sunroom. Forgot. Mm -hmm. They're still expensive up front. <laughs> Yeah. I'll just make sure that they put in the um, make it uh, PV ready. So all the mm. all the you know the piping and wiring is there, and when you can afford it, then boom. It's pretty amazing well, how all the smart smart technology has kind of been incorporated into the new um, energy ratings too, as like the smart thermostats and yeah, that type of thing. Right. Yeah. Then and actually, I don't think I mentioned that was uh, one of our low hanging fruit that we have is a fifty dollar incentive for a smart thermostat. Nice. And you can install it yourself. You don't even have to have a professional do it. So, um, <laughs> Jacob's already shopping. Yeah, the I, place. I call smart thermostats uh, the the gateway to smart yes. to smart technology. Yes. So absolutely, the gateway drug is it's, what it, uh, is. it is. Right. And then it's, you would control the whole it, world on your phone. Just ask me. I have everything on yeah, my phone. Everything on his phone. He can convince you the house is haunted. I can turn the heat on everything. right now. The kids are at home. I can turn the heat on on them. See what happens. <laughs> That oh, is well, a that's what I did before when I was, I was mentioning the uh, the furnace behind me. Well, the AC was running earlier. I had to sw switch it off. I used that uh, <laughs> smart technology right there. <laughs> it's pretty. It actually works great. I, I have uh, a setup where I have an apartment upstairs. It's uh, an older bungalow style home, and um, I, I they don't have a thermostat because they're connected. It's all the yep. same heating and cooling system. Um, but I put a sensor, a remote sensor, that's hooked up to the actual th uh, thermostat up there so I know what uh, temperature they're dealing with. So um, they don't come down and say, it's too hot, it's too cold. And I'm saying, no, you stop being whiners. You're saying, <laughs> shut your windows, it's winter. Right. So I don't have to say that now because now I can actually look and say, hey, yeah. look, the temperature is X. And they you, should, you love guys should that. be fine or it's I, I agree you're you're too cold or you're too warm so and most of these new smart thermostats will give you reports like you can look on the phone or on the app and you can actually see your average you know what you yep. cool it at and heat at probably a better report than um so you're getting from uh, most of your utility companies i would have to say and i have to be careful saying that too because utility companies fund focus on energy so <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Be nice to them. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, I'm pointing out the obvious. It's yeah. not like uh, it's unknown. But uh, actually, I, I don't know if you guys are in MGE's coverage area. Um, we I'm in MGE's coverage area, and we have a I have a deal where they send me a um, twenty five dollar gift certificate every year because my thermostat is actually controlled by them in the wow. summer. Oh, really? Mm. So when we hit a really super hot day they can uh they'll give me advance notice and say you know what we're gonna turn you off for an hour mm. at x time and for that they'll give me a gift certificate every year so oh. well we've so. we've uh sold our house right now we're on the adams county um oh. electrical program mm -hmm. it's called adams county something or other. yeah but i mean we have buildings that are with alliant mg and e we, all of them, yeah. So we're pretty familiar. Excellent. So yeah, I don't know, um, one of the things I, I didn't mention with the uh, HVAC and the in insulation, um, we have 
two tiers of incentives. So if you have anyone listening who is uh, in a low to moderate income group or they're a building owner and their tenant is in that low to moderate income group, they can get a higher incentive. Oh. So um, that's a at or below 80% of state median income. So that's uh, it's really helpful. I don't know if you guys are helping investors, you know, invest in properties or duplexes yeah. and such like that. Uh, but if the tenants are in a low to moderate income group and they want to increase the, uh, you know, replace a furnace or increase the insulation, they can actually get a higher incentive. So it's a great idea to look into that. Yeah. Yep. Neat. So what else are we talking about uh, as far as energy efficiency goes? Solar PV? What's that? Solar PV. <laughs> well, uh, Jacob was trying to discourage us because of the price tag that he put on his panels. <laughs> for his I wanted the luxury <laughs> solar panels. The gold plate. Yeah, you wanted the t Charger. Tesla model. Oh, oh man, yeah. I, want, um, I want the Tesla one so bad. Those, they look pretty <laughs> slick. They don't really do them in Wisconsin, though. But does that require like a battery right. pack in the garage then to, to store the electrical, the Tesla version? Uh, I'm not sure on the Tesla version. I don't think there's actually even any installers in Wisconsin for Tesla. Well, it, it hasn't really proven itself that well yet in the marketplace. Um, but the regular panels, you know, my experience is a little different from what Jacob's price tag was. <laughs> Mine was, uh, I have them on my roof, and I put them up, uh, I think I'm going on four years now. And my price tag was more around $12,000. Yeah. Mm. I would totally do it for $12,000. So, and then Jacob right now the federal government has a, uh, <laughs> has a, uh, a, a federal energy tax credit for 26% uh, of the project cost. <sighs> So, um, if your panels cost, uh, you know, um, ten thousand, then you're going to get a twenty-six hundred dollar direct credit on your personal income taxes. And Jacob's of course, I have to put that little asterisk there. You should always check yeah. with your tax advisor. Jacob's head spinning right now. <laughs> I really would love. I love the idea of the solar panels. I'm just when when it came time to actually building a house, they threw so many numbers yeah. at us. It yeah. was kind uh, of overwhelming. I'm sure. And, like, it's a pipe dream to have the solar panels, but I'm like, I do want that more square footage. If I only have, like, X number of dollars, like, give me the square footage. I'll put the panels on. I'll put them on later. But right. Yeah. Put them on when you can go buy them, like, at Home Depot yourself and just lug them up there on the ladder. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> it's someone else We're do definitely that. doing a podcast while you do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> I'll film that. Go ahead. <laughs> Here's Jacob going up the ladder now. There's you Jacob will, falling down the ladder. You will never see me on the roof. I will hire people to hang up my Christmas lights. There's this, <laughs> no, no way. Safety first. Uh, yeah, and 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 second. My sister and brother-in-law have a house out in uh, rural Lake Mills, and they have the whole back side of their um, outbuilding. And I don't think it's anything in the house. It's just the outbuilding. So there's probably 40 feet of solar panels mm. on the back of their shed, so they don't have to pay anything. Yeah, he's oh, a I'm solar sure. panel expert. Yeah, he's like so, a yeah. VP of solar for Newman Homes or something. Actually, that's Wait, the development. You're talking about Adam? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's the same guy that installed them on the houses we were just talking about, the yes. Tim O'Brien houses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so the Tim O'Brien house you just mentioned, um, Steve, he's actually the VP of solar for that company. Oh, okay. It's nice. not called, it's called, not it's called like Newman. It's like Sunvest. Sunvest? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, he, he was on talking all about solar panels for us. And uh, we learned all kinds of good things. Yep. That's probably helped get Jacob excited about solar panels <laughs> before his dreams got crushed. All right. I think it was a Tesla, I think, was the first. Oh, yeah. I think he was yeah. pretty excited about the Tesla ones. Oh, you know, I wanted to say something about those Tesla battery Bitcoin. packs. Bitcoin. What? <laughs> Bitcoin's doing pretty good today. Oh, boy, oh okay. Mm -hmm. But um, what I wanted to say is that when I started or when I invited Steve on the show, um, something happened to my Facebook feed. Like I got a, I got a bug or not a bug, but I've, I've been getting blasted with ads for, uh, Tesla battery packs and like <laughs> solar related things. Like it's been like crazy. Um, so I wonder if, cause it, they're really pushing like Tesla battery packs in Wisconsin homes and like installing them and stuff. So I'm wondering if, well, they, you also have the rolling out of all the new trucks and cars coming out i mean the 2022 ford f-150 supposed to be electric too as well as the tesla cyber truck mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But I just wonder if you can install non-Tesla panels and still use their battery packs. To I think store it's just a charger, power. though. It just stores the power until you dis- it, dispense yeah, it with the car. It, it's just a battery. So, yeah, yeah, you can. Yes. You don't have to have Tesla panels to put in a Tesla battery. Um, All right. That'll be my flex. As far as I'm aware. <laughs> I've got a Tesla it's like our battery. Bolt, our Bolt Lift has a solar panel that charges right. to 12 volts. I want to I take you out to the garage and show you my Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Not the actual car, that, just that, the battery. That, that battery. Just battery. Just oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't elaborate. It's just the battery <laughs> just the over battery here. Back. <laughs> but see, the name is the same yeah, yeah. here. Take you a can picture touch with it, it if you want. <laughs> it's smooth. It's smooth. <laughs> Oh, uh, really? Yeah, it's inter- it's interesting. I can uh, um, I, I visit uh, Australia um, as often as I can. And, Couldn't tell you uh, by your accent. It will explain <laughs> something. Yes, um, and, and down there, homes with uh, PV panels, just about every single home has yeah. battery. Yep. Hmm. So you're you're storing, and that makes it uh, so. Um, you know, instead of you putting that that power back into the grid, right now. Uh, like on a day like today, I'm making electricity. I'm putting it into the grid. I'd actually be storing it in the battery before, you know, and it gets right. to capacity. Then it will go to the, the grid. Right. And then overnight, I'm taking it out of the battery instead of pulling it back out of the grid. Right. Mm-hmm. So that provides more efficiency for me too. So I think at one point, uh, I'm not sure if they're doing any more. The electric companies were paying back um, money to the owners of whole, of solar panels that were making more than they needed. That would it's dependent on each utility at right. the moment. There's no set state like standard for that, so it's up to each utility, and and you need to explore that before you uh, sign the dotted line on putting the panels on your home to make sure that that's okay. You think um, that would incent incentivize a lot more people to have solar panels on the roofs if they were, you know, getting paid back instead of just it going back to the grid. Possibly, yeah. There, there's some um, some items in front of the Public Service Commission at the moment that will may change some of the, the how that's all com, you know figured out. So um, I don't want to go too far down that road right now. <laughs> Good. We're going down the heat pump <laughs> rabbit hole, right? But I but I should I should mention though that Focus on Energy does have an incentive for for photovoltaics, and it's uh, five hundred dollars regardless of the size of the system, unless you're in some rural zip codes like probably like yourselves. If you're in Adams County, then you can get then uh, that uh, would double to a thousand dollars. We're gonna have solar so. before Jacob. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we lose Brandon? Is he still here? <laughs> He's still there. No, I'm still here. <laughs> He's just chilling. <laughs> Brandon, what questions do you have? Uh, I have a few questions actually. Um, I'm still like very new to all of this. Uh. <laughs> You know, I we're talking about solar panels, and it's very interesting. But I mean, realistically, how long is it going to take to really get like a return on your investment in doing that? Because it sounds like very pricey, and I don't think it's very like um, cost much of a yeah, or like a realistic option for a lot of people. And I think a lot of people would have to be like sold on just more than doing good for the environment and like how it benefits them in the long run. That's a good question, right? So. There's a couple ways of looking at that. Um, I mean, first of all, you should always, in your home, reduce the amount of electricity you're consuming before you put the panels on. Um, one shouldn't put them on just because they overconsume on electricity sort of a thing. But then the amount you do consume in electricity will, will then determine your payback. So a home that has like gone through and like reduced all of the electricity use in the home puts panels on will actually probably have a little bit of a longer payback uh, than a home that has, um, you know, that maybe has like a, um, a pool when you got that pool pump pumping all the time it. sort of a thing, um, maybe two AC units sort of a thing. Well, and, but of course your panels will have to be sized according to your how much you're you're consuming anyway so you know to put a number on it like just for example i and i only know from my own personal experience um my home had just a below average use for electricity and uh, my panels i'll probably see about a nine-year payback so i'm i'm already four years in i got about another five to go and i'll see a payback so really what you're talking about then is have the um the vacuum test um <laughs> Then you're looking at all of your, as part of that test, you're including your LED lighting and reducing as much electricity consumption as you can. Yep. And then yep. at that point, have it, the panel, electrical panel sized for what you might need. Correct. Yep. 
and, so solar and I'll correct you on the vacuum yeah. test. It's actually an energy assessment. I like the uh, blower test better. <laughs> <laughs> Blow a door, yes. There you go. Even though it's it it is more actually like a vacuum than it is a blower door yeah. because it's not blowing air. It's yeah, blowing air out. out. So anyway, <laughs> I'm sticking with my story, Steve. Just so you know, <laughs> it's it, sometimes if you say vacuum, you 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 tend to like. Um, I used to do those tests myself, yeah. and and you tend to like uh, um, panic the people inside of the home because. <laughs> If you say vacuum, that means all the air is gone. <laughs> right. And uh, so you have to assure them that, you know what, their house actually is leaky. Air will leak back in. So right. don't worry about it. You kind of breathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I got another question for you, Steve. Yep. Uh, so, again, I'm still very new to this, and it's all very interesting to me. But uh, so, like, what about, like, the lifespan for these panels and, like, maintenance? I mean, like, are they forever? You're going to have them and everything will be good? Or is it like like a roof so, kind of got to be replaced? Uh, they will – They they're on paper, they're 15 years is their lifespan, all right? Um, so when they depreciate them for, like, calculations, 15 years is usually the number that they'll throw on them. Um I know that they will last longer than that, and the industry knows that they will last longer than that. Um, one of the things of that 15 years is also, too, that uh, new technology will be available at that point and will sort of outpace it on its actual efficiency. So you probably be, will be replacing because there's uh, new panels on the market that are maybe creating more electricity um, more efficiently. Um, so usually it's around 15 years is the the number they put on it but i know that they'll probably last you know upward of 25 to 30 years do you know uh, so the length of a roof now that can be a concern because if you got to take your roof shingles off mm -hmm. so you put in them on today and it's a 30 year roof and you got 15 years already on the roof yeah. that roof's coming off in 15 years so some of the actual um um solar companies will give you a free one-time removal and replacement so you can replace your roof because that was actually holding up a lot of people and putting these panels on because they were worried that they had to replace their roof. So some of the companies started actually looking into doing a like a free one-time removal and replacement. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, did that, that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I got I got one more. Sorry. Um, is there like any like recycling programs with the panels? So where mm -hmm. like the first time you invest in them. And you need to get them replaced that you're not paying full price for the next time around? Not that I'm aware of. We, you know, uh, one of the PV companies listening in on this will think about that idea and say, hold on a second. Maybe there's a there's an idea there of uh, hooking back their old customers sort of a Trademarked. thing. Um, so, Pet and as far it. as recycling of the actual panels, I don't know if that's where your question was going into actually yeah. recycling the plant panels. Um, there are more companies popping up, um, like, uh, coming into play who are actually recycling the panels. So taking those panels, um, I know there's down, like, in the southern, um, southwestern United States, there's a lot of lot more PV down there. Uh, for obvious reasons, it's a little bit more sunny. But um, they're actually getting to the point now where they've got panels that are aging out. And some of the panels they'll take off and they'll actually refurbish and put back into the market as like a used panel. Others, um, they'll recycle. And then they're trying to get as much of the materials out of them instead of them all hitting the uh, landfill. Now, with that, I don't think it's as big a problem with residential PV as it is those big solar farms. Because so Jacob's asking with me what those, PV they will for. get to a point where they will just say at 15 years, everything's replaced. Yeah. Because at that point, it's like it's hit its like, you know, its age limit and they'll go through and just start replacing each single panel. And that that you're talking about, you know, thousands of panels. So that's where they we need to be more concerned there rather than just one, the ones on our roofs. So it used the you would use the acronym PV. What does that stand for? Photovoltaic. There you go, Jacob. Photovoltaic. Thanks. Really, Matt wanted to know. I knew the answer. <laughs> I know solar panels in the past have gotten, uh, you know, the ones from the 80s, 70s, 80s, and early 90s kind of got a bad rap, but the new ones seem to be more efficient. Yep. Um, you know, 
technology changes uh you know they're coming out with all sorts of different ones that they're putting into glass so you can actually have it in glass mm-hmm. and flexible you can put it on like a sh- uh like a, a yacht sail mm-hmm. and actually mm-hmm. make it flexible and and generate yeah. electricity so there's yeah, all sorts of uh, interesting <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, on I top see. of cars, buses, yeah, I mean they're doing all sorts of stuff. So that's where that that's probably the next step of the, that F one fifty coming out. They'll yeah. be putting them on mm-hmm. the toppers or something like that. I think you we know? were in uh, we were at a conference two or three years ago, and there was a futurist, I guess, that was talking about stuff coming up. And one was having solar panels or solar charging ba- panels somehow in the roads in themselves. In the roads, so oh, that you, so you, as you drove over them, mm-hmm. as you drove over them and actually charged your car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Idea it's gonna yeah. be crazy. Do you got any incentives what? for that one? Yeah, we, we'd like that. <laughs> nothing, nothing yet. That's in the pipeline. <laughs> okay, great. I'm just gonna solar panels like, attached to my like roof. The Jetsons. Yeah, no. <laughs> it does. But it, it might so what was the stat I read? Did, it, did I send that to you, Jacob? I don't know. Uh, George uh, Jetson was 40 during the Jetsons. That means he's born right now because he was 40 years old. Because it was Jetsons was actually in whatever year. Oh wow! So think about that. Hmm. <laughs> So he was born right now, so yeah. he'd be 40, 40, in 40 something years. in the Jets. And so it's 40 years from yeah. now that we'd be seeing yeah. that technology. So so. Well, we're, we're close. Yes. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> I, like I, I want to see that. You know, I do most of the cooking at home, so I want to see that, like, pushing the button and that meal coming out. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, you have that now. You <laughs> could pick up your phone and you order it and it shows up at your door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's <just laughs> the same thing. Expensive. I mean, I'm just thinking of the Roomba. Yeah, forty more years of Roomba. Yeah. Maybe sh- maybe it'll, she'll start talking to you. What's and, the name? Uh, um, Jetson's cleaning. Rosie. Rosie. Rosie, Rosie the vacuum. Rosie the robot. Mm-hmm. Rosie the Roomba. <laughs> Rosie the Roomba <laughs> coming out. You, you guys obviously watched a little bit more of the Jetsons than I did. <laughs> yeah, 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 Jen funny. did. Yeah, well, we had cable. <laughs> 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 so just to kind of wrap things up a little bit when um i know you've been kind of in energy and, and doing this kind of stuff for a long time what's kind of like the biggest change that you've seen um kind of be become a success that you know like initiatives that were put out to see if they would work hmm wow jen you really thought about that question because you got me stumped <laughs> um <laughs> Well, it's well, as far as if I'm like looking at focus on energy, the um, I think the solar PV and uh, the furnaces would probably be the two biggest like initiatives that they started that have been successful. Mm-hmm. You know, you can tell on focus on energy if something's successful because the incentive will go down and then eventually phase out right mm-hmm. and right. that's called market transformation where the market they've transformed the market so yeah. it's that's and that's happening with the furnaces they were 90 percent now they're 95 what's going to happen eventually then they can't get be over 100 percent efficient right. furnace so they'll phase it out right um other technology that's sort of not within focus on energy um you know, I think one of the biggest things that I'm seeing that is going to become, I think, even bigger in your industry, we'll see it as real estate agents, is um, um, electric uh, vehicle charging mm-hmm. becoming like the norm. Yep. Like that new house that Jacob's getting built, though, it'll be an option of the part of the package. Do you want an, you know, an EV plug-in as part of the package? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's kind I think of that's interesting. been very successful. Because we, uh, when we started, there was always a part in the offer to purchase that talked about rental weatherization, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, there was, because pr- there was a lot of properties that were, you know, not efficient, and they had all of their problems with lack of, you know, insulation, insulation and windows. not proper windows. And now we don't even have that in our offer anymore because things have progressed enough that it was kind of like we didn't have to worry about that rental weatherization. So I think doing these little things just keep moving the process forward to make things better. So just right. something that I sort of noticed. So beyond the solar panels yep. and the charging stations, what's next? 
Well, you know, I think next is is actually coming back to sort of Jan's comment there with that weatherization. I think we still have some work to do there. Mm-hmm. I think there's still some homes out there, believe it or not, that are sitting there with no insulation in them. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's astounding to think that there could actually still be a house in Wisconsin without insulation in it. Um, so I think that would be probably the next big sort of push to get, you know, to successfully check that off and say, all of the homes, you know, 80%, 90% of the homes in Wisconsin are now insulated. And we know that for sure. Um, you have, have to dual pane windows or at least two panes of glass, mm-hmm. a, a storm and a single pane window, you know, um, and, and, nine, and 90 plus efficient furnace or 95% plus efficient furnace in place and such like that or a heat pump. Uh, you know, getting, a, getting um, electric baseboard heaters out, they are the most inefficient way of heating a home. Or an apartment, getting them out and putting in um, heat pumps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. The the COP difference there, which is a coefficient of performance, is like I think the uh, heat pumps are three hundred times more efficient than those electric baseboard heaters. You wonder if the utility companies could actually see or measure based on uh, the house how efficient they might be, and then give incentives targeted at each house versus a broad brush of. You're getting people to incentivize. You know what? I, I think actually, I think there's some some uh, credence to that. I think if we could have um, meters, mm-hmm. smart meters that actually like right. connected to an app on our phone and told us today I'm consuming this much energy, I right. might actually go over to my thermostat and turn it down right. or up a little bit, depending on which time of year it is, um, or turn that light off that I can tend to like. Uh, leave on all the time or you know get after the kids a little bit more like turn the tv off you're not watching it sort of a thing so um but if we if we only had that i mean you can get some technology that you can plug in on your side of things like on the right by your um, electrical panel that can give you like you know real time um you know uh information about like how much energy you're consuming on your home but um, having that as part of like your company, you know, instead of a utility company being a utility company, they're being an energy company and actually, you know, helping you with that energy piece of the puzzle. So, I mean, it helps their bottom line at the end of the day because if they can save putting another solar farm in, another power plant in, that actually helps them because mm-hmm. it's costly to build those things. Mm-hmm. So, if they can help you reduce, that actually helps their bottom line. Well, it's that time of year when it's so hot and we yell at the kids about opening and closing windows and shutting doors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you may hear the yes. verbiage, shut the door. Yep. All right, Brendan, yes. did you learn something? I learned a lot. All right. I it, learned a lot. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate having you on, Steve. We, yeah, thanks a lot. We always learn a lot. Well, thank you for inviting me, and it's awesome to have uh, Home Team for You on as ambassadors. We're super excited about uh, getting those welcome kits out to your buyers. So, um, you know, it helps them sort of get an understanding of how they can get an efficient start with their new home. So, right. yeah. And I think that's really nice of you guys to even go that extra mile to do that for your, your clients as well. Absolutely. So um, that's awesome. And yeah. thanks for the invite. Well, appreciate appreciate it. it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks so much. See ya. All right. Take care. Yep. Bye. Oh, I was going to ask him if you could get that box, Jacob. I'll get that box. (laughs) Don't you worry. I'll get (laughs) somehow you're going to get that. (laughs) Well, I already looked online. If you go on their website, folks on energy.com, you can get a box every like three years or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they got got lots of free stuff. Yeah, we did Mm -hmm. one already. I think one of them, I forgot to ask him, they includes like the uh, uh, shower heads too, I think. Yeah, I saw that. There's all kinds of things that you don't even really think of that it's like if you just tweak it a little bit, you're so much more efficient. We changed out all of our um, f- our indoor floodlights to LED. Yeah, Matt was on a mission. And I was. he was ordering the box, trying to get everything all done. I'm like, really? These, uh, the studio lights here are LEDs. Oh. That's why they're not so hot. They're not hot. Mm-hmm. And they're super bright. If you look directly at them, you will go blind. <laughs> I just I just looked at this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did I supposed to record? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, did I? I uh, hope so. Gosh. <laughs> seriously, they they are seriously like they're still blinding my eyes right now. It's yeah, ridiculous. Don't do that. Don't look at them. Brendan, go do it. 
No, no, I want to, but I'm fighting the urge. I want to, I want to. It's like looking at an eclipse. I'll take his word for it. I won't, I'm great at it. All right, well, should we chat about the market a little bit? Yeah. What market? What market? The real estate market? Oh, okay. What's going on? Flea market. Flea market. Yeah. Stock market. Uh, well, I found, a, I found a little stat, a little graph that mm-hmm. you guys can banter off of. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to pop it up. I'm going to let you guys all do all the chat in here. All right. <laughs> but it's the months of inventory of home sales. And it's a graph Thanks. from 1999 to today of when the market switched from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Um, you can definitely see the uh, what happened when, can't you? It's kind of funny because it's about when your real estate career started. <laughs> like, yeah. Here, we started here's in 90, what we've been through. So I started in 97. You started in 98. Mm-hmm. And then it was uh, and We went market. on vacation in 2006, 2006. Yep. in September. And then all of a sudden, no market phone calls yep. came. And we were like, wow, that was the most relaxing vacation ever. And Carson was born. Yeah. And we were like, uh-oh. <laughs> 2006, it went down. 2007, <laughs> Got even worse. Eight worse. Two thousand nine, something happened where it uh, started to come back to a neutral market. Took a breath. Yeah, mm-hmm. took a breath for one year, and then two thousand ten went skyrocketed. So, if for those of you who can't see the graph, the um, uh, break even points about six per, six months or less is a seller's market. Anything over seven months is a buyer's market. Mm-hmm. In two thousand ten, uh, it looks like the it was what uh, twelve. Probably 12. Looks about 12. So yeah. a double. So the buyer's market in 2010 was rocking. So now we are in like the most extreme seller's market that the graph is showing. Um, I should say also the 12 actually is months of inventory. Yeah. So right now we're at the point of um, two months of inventory and climbing. It looks like there's a little hook there, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Tiny little tick up. Yes. Yeah, I mean, back when it was more of a buyer's market, we would be talking to sellers about, you know, the months of inventory, and we'd have to be, like, counting back and figuring Mm -hmm. out, you know, okay, there's this many homes for sale in your neighborhood, so if you price here, you're more likely to sell quicker than if you price here, and you made, like, graphs and charts. and (laughs) Yeah, I actually did. Yeah. that's So, like, the neutral um, market is six to seven months, so today being you know, two months of inventory and the extreme case of 12 as a buyer's market. It's the big, that's a big difference for months of inventory. Yeah, say, and what, knowing how to work all of those ways in real estate is, it's kind of interesting. I was going to say, what, what's the difference between uh, the market today and when you guys were trying to sell homes in like 08 and 2010? Supply and demand. Actually, 2000. <laughs> I mean, what, your experience. 2010 and eight, that was, 2010 was kind of the, well, any, anywhere between 2008 to 2010 was kind of that market when, you know, there were foreclosures. Well, yeah, you had people that had um, gotten equity lines that had maxed out their credit cards, refinanced and refinanced until they couldn't refinance anymore. And then they ended up owing more on their homes than what they could be sold for. And so there was a lot of folks that we would have to talk to and it wasn't a happy story. It was kind of like, I know you need to move to Ohio, but you'll need $5,000 to bring to the table to be able to close. And then some people would decide to rent their homes. We have a property management business, so sometimes we would rent them for them. So, you, I mean, just like with anything, you have to kind of pivot and, and make it work. You can see the uh, a lot of times what happened during that period of time, people because there was so much inventory. So if we were in the market now, and we had the same issue of those uh, second mortgages coming due, it wouldn't be an issue because we can justify the price because there's not enough houses available. Right. But back then, because there were so many houses available, it drove up the amount of homes and drove up the uh, um, average houses per month. Now there's so much equity. People have a lot of equity in their homes, whereas back then there just wasn't any because it was so easy to get money you could have a 400 credit score and they would be like, you want a fast and easy loan? Do you want to get a loan over your value and get money back for furniture? Yay! Go back and to that graph, Jacob. So it was a thing. Those so were all bad choices back then. Brendan, I want you to jump in on here. I want you to speculate for me based off of your um, <laughs> economics uh, doctorate degree. Uh-huh. 
Right. <laughs> no, he's just kidding. Um, uh, where where is this where is this going? I mean, that was something that I was about to ask <laughs> Matt and Jen. So now you have to answer it. <laughs> well, I was just going to talk about because you know, last time I was on the show, we talked about just being a new agent nowadays, and you know, right now I'm you know I'm learning every day. But yep. learning in a seller's market, I was just thinking about, you know, how different it's going to be when, you know, eventually it, if it bounces back or, you know, it gets more neutral. But I was just going to ask, because I know Matt and Jen are super experienced, just how do you how do you forecast this? How do you, is there even a way to like look ahead and see like, oh, maybe things can change? You know what I mean? Or because, I mean, just looking at the graph, I don't see any patterns really. I mean, the pattern you know. I see is from 2015 or so till today. It's been a, a a decline. It's just been going on down and or not a decline, but in a, a more extreme seller's market. But, but what's I don't been know. going on with interest rates? Well, you too. also have to keep an eye on mm. an inflation because mm -hmm. inflation will directly affect interest rates too. Because mm -hmm. if the inflation starts creeping up, then the interest rates will start creeping up to balance that out. And yeah. then it goes back to a buyer's market. Yes, it moves. It well, moves it, it moves closer. it back up. I mean, we're, we will be to a neutral market before we'll be to a buyer's market usually. I Go mean, back to the graph again and see how fast those change though. Look how fast it changed between 2005. Well, I'm assuming that's 2005 to 2006 so that spike. Even 6 to 7. Uh, and 9 to 10. So there can happen and we've made that comment a lot is that you know, we were in, on vacation and Carson was born and we had mm. no calls. It happened like that. It wasn't like a we gradual... We were building a spec house. We, we had two house, mortgages. Yeah, yeah that. So... Mm -hmm. It can flip that fast, but the things that have to affect it are going to be interest rates, where, which inflation also comes into play there. So if we get back to the 5% interest rate, that'll slow things down. Yeah. Which I mean, would actually be fine. If we had a 5% interest rate versus what we have now, that'd probably be okay to get back to that balanced neutral market. Yeah. And I 5% probably sounds like, oh, to you, <laughs> Jacob, but yep, yep. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we had mortgages over eight and I know they weren't there fixed are, either. They weren't fixed. And there was a lot of people, you know, that had mortgages way higher than that. So it's kind of like whatever happens, there's ways to make it work. Cause I know um, my dad and my uncle, when it was the seventies and eighties and interest rates were crazy high, they were doing land contracts. They were, I mean, you just figure it out. So you have to be able to be, um, able to flex pivot. with the market. Yes. Pivot, pivot with the market. Sorry. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We watched the friends reunion <laughs> and he made the kids come in the room and he's like, okay, watch this part. This is why we always say, you say that they said yeah. it in the reunion. Yeah. They yeah, had that clip. They had the clip where they were going up and they're pivot. But it was pivot! like, it was like the outtake though. So you yeah. can see him laughing. Yeah. They were totally pivot. cracking up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when you guys sell your couch today, <laughs> pivot, pivot, we'll be just talking to the people that come to pick it up. We'll be <laughs> in the I'm back videotaping, <laughs> yelling pivot, pivot. <laughs> Matt and Jen are selling their couch after this podcast. If anybody wants, <laughs> yeah, we have some couches some for sale, y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's my word for the year, Jen? Simplify. What's my word? No idea. So you gonna sit on the floor? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we get hammocks. Oh. Yeah, we do have hammocks. bean bags. Yeah, we have bean. We, we do have a, have a bean bag. Yeah, it's called love sack. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got a extravagant bean bag. You have the six footer sack. and a five footer. Woo. Yeah, Matt was trying to was sell trying me to it sell earlier. It <laughs> yeah, he's trying to sell everybody our furniture in hey. the office. And there's a couple people that are probably buying things. He's like, just come over, buy it. <laughs> yeah, we told Zim just to come pick up stuff. Just yeah. go in the backyard, pick it up. Mm -hmm. Like, go take it. I am gonna pass on. Your used love sack. But I appreciate <laughs> the offer. It's phenomenal, though. It puts you to sleep right away. Yeah. And I, if I get a love sack, I'm getting a fresh one. It's you just, can buy new covers for them. Yeah. yeah but, but it's called a love sack. I just can't. <laughs> it was like in a kid's playroom. Yeah, I was going to say. It's in the it was actually Where's in the your theater. mind? In the title of the product. <laughs> <laughs> it's L-U-V, I think. S-A-C. Oh. Louvre. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, so we've covered a lot today. Everything from solar to love sacks and yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to heat pumps. Heat, heat pumps. pumps. That is something. I new. saw you just like Jacob. Your little eyes went ding. I have Pump. big eyes. Yes, I was super excited about heat pumps. I'm like, what is this heat pump? How is it better than an air conditioning unit? I've Actually, never heard of this. Parents. 
My I parents to, could have that. I need to look this up. I need to see if this is a real thing. Like, it sound it doesn't sound like it works. Honestly, the way he was describing is it, like it's a yeah. fan. It blows two ways when it's. Well, yeah. You've ever seen a uh, whole house fan? A whole house fan. Yeah. yeah. So it's a. Louvered, I mean, I'm a fan of my house. <laughs> it's a louvered uh, uh, opening in your in your uh, typically in a hallway. You pull it down, a fan kicks on, and sucks all the hot air out. Mm. I mean, it was one an original way to cool a house down. Interesting. Mm-hmm. It that's why I wouldn't. I was bringing up like how the things have changed because they over time they try things and then it you know mm-hmm. pivots About. and mm-hmm. you know. But I can see like what he's doing that they're putting these things into the market to get people to be like okay, this is cool, this is good, I like this, and then they just keep dribbling it, and then it just becomes the norm. So. My parents should get a uh, heat pump. Yeah, they should. They have baseboard. Baseboard heat. I remember back when you were younger, it was always a race to see who could turn down the thermostats the fastest. Because they were on some program where you, if you, you had to keep it off between, was it 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Seven, Wasn't it was there. Like, it was like a time, yeah, you weren't there, that's right. There was a time limit. They had the program they could have the heat on or up to a certain temperature mm. and you got a certain discount but before that you paid full price or something so, so. for sheer fear they yeah. would run it, no it, was, it wasn't sheer fear it was a race oh. just you can get it turned on that's fast. what your Damn. dad convinced yeah, you of. Absolutely <laughs> did. he was like you've got <laughs> one second well there's three of us racing around the house trying to turn the thermostats down yeah sounds like you you, you had, had some good parenting <laughs> yeah <laughs> parenting 101 make everything a contest <laughs> With your, your family's Good competitive, advice. so watch out. <laughs> they're, they're probably like Brendan's taking notes. I am for the future. Uh, I didn't realize how <laughs> cheap smart thermostats really mm-hmm. are, mm-hmm. and that you can install them yourself. Yep. And mm-hmm. it's not that hard. Install um, two of them. Thank you know, for Three my parents. I think that would be a good idea. I don't feel like my dad just like looks at the thermostat for fun <laughs> sometimes, just like dad things, you know. <laughs> What are you talking about? I look at my phone and it shows a thermostat temperature. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So I need to get that and get that app on his phone. Sit in the chair and do it, you know. Father's Day's coming up. It's a little (laughs) cold. (laughs) Ding, ding. (laughs) Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of an obsession. All of the smart technology it really is. It is nice. Like, I lay in bed. I got a (laughs) smart thermostat. I gotta, I gotta start smart thermostat <laughs> at home and like laying in bed. I'm like, it's too hot. Uh, Just crank it on down. I'm laughing at you, but I do the same thing. Yeah, mm. I, know. I was like, you started laughing before I even said yeah. anything. You're just laughing it's at me. I knew, I knew what you were gonna say. <laughs> Oh, okay. And That's I nice. just put on more blankets and warm things because I am not allowed to touch the thermostat. Oh, well, I do that too. I'm like, yeah. I want it super cold so I can put on more blankets. <laughs> I need what? it cold. Yeah, it's great. I need to sleep in like a popsicle. That'd yep. be my dream. Absolutely. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've just gone to a really bad place. Okay, and on that note. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we learned a lot today. For sure. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm definitely like thinking about, even because I don't own a home, you know, what I can do just yeah. around my apartment to be more efficient. Because, you yeah. know, I probably can't just replace yeah, the thermostat and get But you could buy a love sack. I could. You yeah, could. I, could. I got to get the okay first. It's not going to help your it's not going to help your efficiency, but it might, it might No. It might. You <laughs> could just like, like smoosh it, it up against the wall. Yeah, it's like insulation. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like a high heat pump. Yeah. Something like that. No. <laughs> There's like stuff in it. It's and kind of like insulation. Oh, yeah. Okay. I definitely want it, but <laughs> need All to right. get the okay. All right. Okay. Smart man. Mhm. Mhm. Not just me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was it, the three words? Two words? Two words. What? Yes, dear. Yes, yes dear. dear. Yes. <laughs> Matt was told that before we got married at a wedding. Before we got married, he's like, "You're gonna need." Tor- at our wedding? No, that was at Emily and Shane's wedding, and he was Who just, told me that. I think Shane's dad maybe mm. was just like, "You need to learn these two words, son." Yes, dear. Yes, and dear. I was right there, so I was like, "You're a really smart man." And that's a wrap. <laughs> Exit music. <laughs> All right. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate in South Central Wisconsin, you know you know who to call. You do. I know you do. That's Home Team. The number four. The letter U. Dot com. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>